Let me demonstrate why it's so important to set a proper white balance for your images as I turn this raw file into this final image. As always, you can follow along this Lightroom tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. So here we have a dark, cold winter scene. We can see that it's cold because of course due to the snow, but also due to the cold color of the image. That's because I was shooting with a white balance that was way off. Usually what you want to do in this case is to fix the white balance and thus fix this heavy blue color cast. Therefore we want to head into the basic panel and right here you can see the white balance adjustments. Here we have different options. We could either use Lightroom's automatic white balance by clicking on the auto button right here. And as you can see, Lightroom will adjust the white balance automatically. Another way to do that is to use the eyedropper tool to manually select a neutral area of the image. So a spot where the R, G and B values are close to each other. Usually somewhere in the clouds is a pretty good spot to look for such an area or on rock faces in those mountains. You can already see doing it this way, it looks a little bit different than the auto white balance adjustment done by Lightroom. And the third way, which I like to usually apply is to just eyeball the white balance adjustments, bringing those differently colored peaks closer together. For that, I'm going to manually adjust the temperature. And right here where all these peaks are aligning nicely, you can see we have a very neutral looking white balance. So there we have three ways on setting up a neutral white balance, which is quick and easy. However, you don't always want to have a perfect neutral white balance, like I'm showing you in this case, because as we now have adjusted the white balance, we are losing all the coldness of the image. Of course, we can still see the snow and we will think it's a cold winter day, but we had a much colder effect before with the heavier blue color cast. So instead of going for a neutral white balance for this particular image, I want to on purpose introduce color cast by bringing down the temperature very gently. So I think I'm going with something like this. I want to have a very visible blue color cast like this, but not as heavy as with the original raw file. And this already will help delivering a much colder feeling when looking at this image. So right away, let us compare the original raw file, which has a much heavier blue color cast to the edited white balance. We do have much more natural colors, but we didn't lose the coldness of the image as dramatically as with the neutral white balance. Of course, you can not only use that to your advantage with cold wind images like this, but what I like to do with the white balance adjustments is to color grade these warmer sunrise or sunset images by bringing up the temperature instead of working with a neutral white balance. Of course, this is highly dependent on the image. A lot of times I'm just going with a neutral white balance as well, but I think this particular shot is a very nice example to show where adding a kind of wrong white balance will help improve the mood of an image. So now that we have adjusted the white balance, let us continue with some more basic adjustments and finish working on this shot. I do think I want to crop this image slightly because I think it's not perfectly straight. I'm going to very carefully rotate it. That is looking much better. Then let's work on the exposure. This shot is a little bit too dark, so I'm going to change that by bringing up the overall exposure. I'm going to raise it quite a bit. And at the same time, because we have raised the exposure that much, we are losing details in the brightest areas of the image. That's not something we want. So I'm going to bring down the highlights all the way. And at this point, you can see we do get back some structure in these clouds up above. Of course, we're also losing contrast because of these adjustments. So let's work on that. We can bring back contrast by pulling down the shadows. Just be careful to not underexpose anything. Therefore, take a closer look at the histogram as we pull down these shadows. But right around here, it looks good and we have much more contrast added back to the image. Taking another look at this again, you can see we still have some room left for these highlights. So what I'm going to do to make use of them is to bring up the whites, stretching the histogram in the other direction and further adding contrast. And of course, we could also use the contrast slider itself. All right, this is looking really, really good so far. I'm also going to make this shot look a lot sharper and clearer by bringing up the texture. Let me also bring up the clarity a little bit. And then I do think I'm going to drop the dehaze because I just like the effect 
this has on the image. I think it works great on winter scenes like this, making them look just a little bit more hazy. Okay, I also want to bring up the vibrance, but that's about it for the basic adjustments. Again, let's compare the image to before real quick. Exposure wise, it's looking much, much better. Of course, we still have the bl cold blue tones of the adjusted white balance. And now we can work on some areas locally to further improve this image. For that, as always, we want to do that with masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And I don't think there is that much to do. What I want to do is to use a linear gradient covering pretty much all of the sky like this. And I do think I want to make it darker by bringing down the exposure. I'm just making this scene more dramatic this way. I'm also going to add some contrast. So this way we can bring out more of these cloud structures. And for the same effect, I want to slightly bring up the clarity. Okay, this is looking great. I do think I want to add a lot more clarity for the upper half of the image. So I'm going to use a linear, another linear gradient and I'm covering everything until I hit the water down below. What I'm going to do is to just add a lot of clarity. Somewhere around 35 looks good. Usually I'm not going this high for bigger areas like this, but for this particular shot, it works quite well. Also, I think I'm going to bring up the texture and I'm also going to add some more contrast in this particular spot. Perfect, this is looking great. Then at this point you might see the reflection looking a little bit unnatural because it's brighter than the landscape above. So we want to change that. Let's use another linear gradient targeting the water in the foreground like this. And I'm going to subtract the linear gradient because I don't want to affect in this ice patch right here in the very near foreground. So I think something like this should work pretty good. I'm going to slightly bring down the exposure, making the reflection darker this way. And I'm going to add some clarity, which will help make this reflection pop a little more. Wonderful. Now we're almost done with the masking. Just one more thing I want to do. I want to use another linear gradient for the very top part of the sky. And I want to bring down the exposure very gently, making the top part of the sky even darker this way. And I want to further bring out details in the clouds by bringing up the contrast. All right, that's looking awesome. That's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. Here we have the image after the basic adjustments. And this is what we have done with the masking. Looks way more dramatic. Now let's do a little bit of color grading. So I'm going to skip over the color mixer because there isn't much going on color wise, except for all these blue tones. But I want to emphasize these blue tones a little more. And therefore I'm going to head straight into the color grading tab for the split toning. I don't want to change the highlights because I want to keep them kind of neutral, but I want to work on the midtones and the shadows. So let's start with the midtones. And for both the midtones and the shadows, I'm going to set up the hue to something very cold, dark blue right around here. And I'm going to only very slightly bring up the saturation because we really don't want to overdo it with the blue tones. Just a little bit. Then for the shadows, let's do the same thing. Set up the hue. I'm trying to use the same color tone here and I'm going to very gently raise the saturation here. Perfect. Now that's almost invisible, but we do have a little more of a blue hint in those darker tones. Finally, let's also head into the calibration tab. And here I want to work on the blue primary hue and saturation, as I do for all my images. I'm going to bring I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue very gently, which as you can see will give these blue tones more of a cyan color tone. And at the same time, I'm going to bring up the saturation just to make the colors pop a little more. Then what we want to do next is to sharpen this image. So let's open up the detail panel and I'm going to bring down the radius as always. And I'm going to raise the details all the way up. Then let's hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. As you can see, this way we can nicely target the center parts of the image, which are the areas that needs some more sharpening. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening as well. Wonderful. Of course, there are a ton of sensor spots in this image because I haven't cleaned my camera in a while. It's probably time to do that. But until then, let me show you how we can fix these sensor spots in Lightroom.
we are going to click on the remove tool right here and we want to use the heal brush here we can just look for these sensor spots in the image like this or we could make use of the visualize spots tool so click on this checkbox and this way all the sensor spots become a little more visible you could adjust this slider right here to make them even more visible if needed and with this heel brush i'm just going to brush over all these dots usually i'm just doing this in photoshop because it's much faster on my system but i guess in this case it's okay all right i think we got everything let's deactivate the visualize spots tool and this looks much much cleaner so that's the finished image. I hope this little white balance tutorial will be helpful for your upcoming images. And if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you all next time.